This video is to discuss direct variation, which is a special linear relationship. We want to first look at what is direct variation. One thing you want to look for when you're looking at a graph is does the line, if it's a line, that goes through the origin, 0, 0, and has an equation written in the format y equals k x, where k is the constant of variation. You've used the word slope to represent this in the past as well. So y equals mx, and we know that if it's just y equals kx, then the y-intercept is 0, which is why we see that it goes through the point 0, 0. So here's the point 0, 0. This line does not go through that point. Therefore, it is not direct variation. If we look at the other options, which one of these goes through 0, 0? Only one of these goes through 0, 0. It is not that one. It is not that one. So again, I'm looking at the origin to see if it goes through that. This is the graph that shows a line going through the origin. To find the constant of variation, we would identify another point on the line, and we can use the rise over run to basically, you're figuring out the slope. So if I'm at negative 2, 1, I have to rise negative 1 because I'm going down, and positive 2 because I'm going to the right to get from that point to the origin. So this would be y equals negative one-half x is the equation, and k is negative one-half. So just remember that what you already know about finding slope is going to apply to be able to find k. It's just that a direct variation is a special linear relationship that goes through the origin, meaning the y-intercept is zero. This graph represents direct variation. Why? Because it starts at the origin, 0, 0. And you are asked to come up with an equation for this graph. So if it's direct variation, that means it goes through the origin. So all you need to come up with is the slope, or the constant of variation. To do that, find a point on the line and be sure to pay attention to the scale. A lot of people, the mistake they made is they'll go, they'll count one, two, three, one, two, and think, oh, I'm going up three over two, so it has a slope of three over two or 1.5, but that's not correct unless you pay attention to the scale and you get the same thing. So let's pay attention to the scale. So we're going up 10, 20, 30, so rise 30, and each x value is going over 2, so over 2, 4, 30 over 4. And 30 over 4 is not equal to 3 over 2, so you definitely had to pay attention to your scale here. So we know the equation is y equals 30 over 4x, but that would be simplified. We could start off by dividing the top and the bottom by 2 to get 15 over 2x. And they may even turn it into a decimal and say y equals 7.5x. So the constant of variation here is 7.5. The equation is y equals 7.5x. Okay, let's look at, they also talk about sequences because an arithmetic sequence where you're adding the same amount each time is also a special linear relationship. Um, when they use this format right here, they're saying to find the next term, take the previous term and subtract 2. 
so subtract 2 from the previous term. And then this is telling me the first term or the first number in the sequence is 10. Well, just knowing this, we can look over here and say, well, that doesn't start with 10, that doesn't start with 10, that doesn't start with 10. So the only answer would be this answer right here, because they're saying the first term is 10, and to find the next term, I'm subtracting 2. So this is called the recursive recursive formula for an arithmetic sequence. Pay attention to the starting value, the starting term, the first term is 10, and then pay attention to what you're doing to that term to get the next term. You're subtracting to each time. Hope that helps. Thank you.